Hi, this is Dr. Mikolaj Rashek of Mara Genomics, uh, making another quick update on mRNA vaccines. There's a lot of information that has come out since the last video I've made and I wanted to create a quick update. So one of the things that I wanted to talk about is a paper, a preprint, meaning it hasn't been peer reviewed yet that came out, that stirred quite a bit of controversy in this particular um, scientific publication compared the effectiveness of vaccination versus prior infection from subsequent protection from infection by the Delta variant in the Israeli population. And what this particular paper was able to show is that those who were naturally infected previously had, were better protected by about 13 fold difference from subsequent Delta variant infection than those who were immunized. And the reason why this paper created some controversy is because obviously some people use that information uh, to claim that look, natural infection is better than vaccination. Although of course, keep in mind that in order to obtain this natural infection, first you actually have to develop the get infected with SARS-CoV-2 virus develop the disease and then survive that disease so and the whole purpose of vaccination obviously was to remove the need the requirement of going through that process so as to the fact that natural infection could provide better immune protection that's actually not a crazy shocking surprise it's after all as i mentioned you need to develop the disease and survive it and therefore it's not unreasonable to think that you might actually as a consequence of that afford better better protection from subsequent infection than immunization so to me that's not a not a shocking thing at all it is it is what it is the bigger point is, is that it shows you how powerful that potential immune protection from natural infection really is. And that now that we know that vaccines do not actually fully protect from infection, we clearly see that vaccinated people can still can still get infected by the Delta variant and they can spread it to others. As, an, as a consequence of that, vaccines can contribute towards herm immunity only to a limited extent. So they will contribute towards herd immunity, but there is this gap. And as long as that gap exists, that, that gap towards building herd immunity has to, be, has to come from somewhere else. And that actually might be filled by continuous increase in natural infections. So first of all, what do, what do I mean by herd immunity? What we're talking about is a situation where enough of population has immune protection from being infected by the virus that the virus can no longer effectively spread amongst the population. So that's what herd immunity is. And clearly we cannot reach herd immunity right now because in the background of very high vaccination rate that we see in many places in the world, especially amongst the high risk groups, there is still an infection going on. And therefore we will need to close that gap uh, somehow and perhaps natural infection unfortunately will be the final contributing factor that will provide enough immune protection amongst in, in the entire population so that this pandemic finally finally ends and uh, speaking of of natural there's actually a very cool mural I'd love to show you right here so that's to me that was not a big surprise that that natural infection could afford better immune protection than vaccination that's 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 okay obviously vaccines that was the point of vaccines is to reduce the need of going through natural infection and basically reduce the risk of potentially dying as a consequence of being infected so we are right next to to the river hence the the mural uh, so that that's basically that paper and what i wanted to mention mention about about that um, another big event that took place since the last video i've made is the fact that fda actually approved one of the vaccines the pfizer BioNTech vaccine and uh, i looked into the into those documents and i wanted to share some interesting information with you and one of the interesting facts that I found, actually, first of all, the approval was granted only for the BioNTech company in Germany. That's it. Pfizer was not mentioned at all. So I actually don't know what that really means, but it is what it is. Uh, just an interesting comment. So the approval is only for the German company um, and that's it. 
So I have no clue what that means in terms of what kind of vaccines will be distributed um, that are approved in, in the United States. But when I was looking at the summary, at the briefing summary, um, that was that basically what led to the decision of the approval there was an interesting information in terms of the clinical trials so originally there were clinical trials conducted and recall that these clinical trials um, established very high effectiveness of these vaccines and the purpose of these clinical trials is that you compare vaccinated population against a control which are basically people who were not told what they're getting they were they were naive about that knowledge and they received a placebo something that was just fake it wasn't really vaccine and it's through the subsequent outcomes between those two groups that we were able to determine how efficacious the vaccines actually were so what the document stated is that as soon as the eff efficacy of the vaccines was established everyone in the control group was given an option for ethical reasons to actually obtain the vaccine to be able to protect themselves from subsequent disease and apparently the, basically what that means is that we have effectively destroyed our control group so for health reasons and moral reasons that sounds all good but from a scientific point of view this is actually really bad because we no longer have a control group to be able to compare the difference between those who were vaccinated versus unvaccinated and therefore the amount of data that was collected is only is only good enough for a few months and after that it's over we no longer actually have a control group to be able to study this further which means is that we in a future comparison studies we will actually have to come up with completely new control groups which basically would constitute unvaccinated people because we still if we want to be able to compare what happens as a consequence of natural infection in comparison to vaccinations we do need that control group and now we need to establish that completely uh, completely pretty from scratch and it's already leading to some uh, scientific problems for actually not being able to create proper control group for comp for comparison purposes in these studies which basically brings me to this unusual notion that perhaps we need to start be cognizant of this and start consider protecting our ever increasing numbers of unvaccinated people just so that we have some of these people available for for study for scientific studies purposes so that's something that is perhaps unusual but but nevertheless something to con consider um, and unfortunately we can no longer continue compar comparative studies between vaccinated and unvaccinated from the original clinical trials because according to those FDA documents the control groups are actually now gone and non-existent or at least greatly diminished but people were given that option to start taking vaccination almost immediately as soon as the data came out uh, approving the emergency use of the Pfizer BioNTech vaccine so that's all the information I want to share with you in this particular video if you you like this video give us a like definitely subscribe to the channel you know how it works and and how it helps and i look forward to seeing you in the next installment bye for now